Uh, next up we have Elizabeth Eiler Sullivan. Elizabeth Eiler Sullivan is a writer and a mother of four boys, ages eight and under, I believe it. She is a native of St. Paul who has left and come back, left and come back, left and come back to this city, which in some native eyes may not make her native anymore. She writes about what she knows, and she knows a lot about the outdoors, boys, dogs, travel, and living elsewhere, returning back to St. Paul. Please welcome Elizabeth. Thank you, St. Paul Almanac, and um, the editors here, and friends and family have come to listen. Uh, my piece is called Boomerang Roots. It's in the same, this edition of St. Paul Almanac. And I got really curious about um, watching some of my friends leave and come back along with me and other people stay pretty rooted. So this piece is part of a larger piece. Uh, and it's apropos for coming up near Halloween here. Uh, part of my roots is that my grandfather is an undertaker in the larger Twin Cities area. And so I had a different relationship with Halloween and um, funerals and funeral homes. So here we go. I grew up playing hide and seek in coffins. Can you hear me okay? Okay. I grew up playing hide and seek in coffins while my grandfather, an undertaker, would embalm, bathe, and apply makeup to each body in the nearby kitchen. That's what they called where they made, took care of the bodies. We grandkids would while away the hours by sliding into the tucked silk insides of these coffins, sliding down to where the feet of the deceased were meant to rest. <laughs> I'd lie there wondering, when they're dead, do feet bow out or pigeon toe in? Do they splay or stay placed, unmoving and unflinching? I'd still my breath and stifle my laughter and listen to my cousin's stocking feet flee around each coffin, standing tippy toe on the risers, peering in, waiting for my boo, which was always followed by their shriek. My grandfather would scold us, quiet or you'll get a lickin', he'd say. Looking back, I imagine these sudden bursts of noises startled his precision, his stroke of makeup or his insertion of a needle or the fluid removal. I imagine what awaits us as we drop six feet under, maggots and dirts, minerals and sediments settling in on our body in our final rooting place. I have lived in many places, Boston, Chicago, Santa Clara, Gloucester, and Santa Fe. Yet I keep coming back to the city where I was born, where my grandfather is now buried in its outskirts, the city of St. Paul. When I lived in Santa Fe, I remember driving by the dusty cemetery off the Sail del Prado, which hugged the city, Santa Fe's main loop, and think I couldn't possibly be buried there in this high desert. The landscape was foreign, the ground hard, and the dirt red. Not the dark, muddy brown I was used to seeing at burials back home. What is it about St. Paul that pulls a native home? My roots trace back to generations of homesteaders from Europe and the East Coast, to Credit River, Minnesota, to the farms of Lakeville, to St. Paul. I have left many times and yet a return, sometimes for short stints and others for longer periods. Is it the great muddy Mississippi River running between Minneapolis and St. Paul that pulls me back home? It twists and turns like fishing lines being let out, bobbers dipping beneath the surface. Or is it each seductive season of a colorful fall, which we've had a great one, right? And a romantic spring that lure me near. Is this why so many born in this tender return? Part of the reason for my most recent return four years ago was to heal to gain firm grounding. This time when I came home, I was rapidly losing my hair due to alopecia. The stress of moving from Boston to Amasquam to Santa Fe of being uprooted had gotten the best of me. I worried about raising my kids in this new terrain of Santa Fe where we didn't know the families, where we didn't have the connections. The familiar surroundings of St. Paul had pulled me home to connect to my roots, to dig down and grasp them one sinewy tentacle at a time. Thank you.